Hello and welcome to this online act of worship from Logoya Head Parish Church. My colleagues Lorna, Margaret, Douglas and I look forward to sharing this time of worship with you. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have you with us. St Paul exhorts, offer your very selves to God, a living sacrifice dedicated and fit for his acceptance. Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand and he will lift you up. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. We listen now as Margaret plays for us hymn number 214 in CH4 and you may wish to sing along uh, at home. Uh, it's the hymn New Every Morning is the Love and it's hymn 214 in CH4. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of creation, to you be all praise. Most mighty your working, most wondrous your ways. Your glory and power are beyond us to tell, and yet in the heart of the humble you dwell. God our Father, we do give you our praise. We acknowledge your might. We marvel at the way in which your ways enrich our lives. Such is your majesty, we can scarce find the words to describe it. Yet we know that you dwell in the hearts of each and every one of us. And so it is in humility that we come before you now, aware of your omnipotence, yet conscious of your constant and generous love and care. Often we let you down by careless words or deeds, in episodes of thoughtlessness, in time when we overlook the needs of our families or friends, or when we fail to spot a cry for help. We are sorry. Yet we know that you forgive us, for these shortcomings are unintentional, and when we reflect on them we find ourselves embarrassed, perhaps even ashamed. Sometimes we may feel we do not deserve your forgiveness, but you are our understanding God, and with your help we can do so much better. As we make our way through life, from time to time our priorities become skewed, our focus becomes blurred, and we find ourselves straying from the path you would have us take. There are times when we become bewildered by all that is happening around us 
No more so than in these days when we are experiencing uncertainty, concern, perhaps even a degree of alarm. We confess that the current situation unnerves us, that we find it difficult to orientate ourselves and that we are just plain confused. Yet in you, Father, we have a firm and unwavering compass. We have your strong hand to guide us and we have the sure knowledge that however difficult things may become, you will always be by our side for you are an utterly dependable and solid rock. We hardly need to crave your presence and support, for we know it is always there. Yet we want to tell you how very much we appreciate and value all that you do for us throughout our lives. These thanks and all our petitions and prayers we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. readings today, first reading comes from the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. It tells us of a time when Moses had fled from Egypt because of an action he'd taken there against the slavery imposed upon the Israelites. Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 to 15 Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he had led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb the mountain of God there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them so now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. 
when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Amen. And we turn to the New Testament, to our second reading, which is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 21. This is a letter Paul sent to people he hadn't visited. It comes directly after the book of Acts in our Bible. And it's teaching in action is what it's about. Having faith in Jesus and love in action as it's headed in the New International Version from which I'm reading. Listen for the word of the Lord. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. My dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. And may the Lord bless to us this reading of his holy word. We move to another hymn, hymn 402 which also speaks of action. Take up your cross, the Saviour said, if you would my disciple be.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence, open the mind of God to us, that in your light we may see light, and in your strength be strong. Amen. I cannot hear the story of the burning bush without my mind drifting back a few years to the Sunday morning when I worshipped in the First Scots Presbyterian Church of Charleston, South Carolina. A church so named because it was founded by a group of Scottish Presbyterians in 1731. In a number of ways, the congregation still cherishes that heritage, not least in the stained glass window at the back of the church. It depicts the burning bush with the motto, Nec Tamen Consume Batur, translated from the Latin. This means, it was not consumed. The burning bush and those words are generally accepted as the motto of the Church of Scotland. There is something rather comforting and indeed reassuring about worshipping among fellow believers in different places, perhaps especially in various parts of the world. I've been fortunate in having been able to worship in quite a number of countries and on every occasion without fail I have been aware of the worldwide family of the church, the great community of faith. And I have been very conscious of God being in the midst of worship offered in all of those varied and different places and settings. There is, if you like, an almost tangible circle of faith which envelops us and to which, as Christians, we all belong. Is there a link between the Old Testament story of the burning bush and our New Testament reading from Paul's letter to the Romans? I think there is. In Exodus chapter 3, we heard that God recognised the plight of his people in captivity in Egypt and commissioned Moses to bring them to the promised land. When Moses expressed his feeling of inadequacy for the task, God simply but reassuringly said, I will be with you. You know, I sometimes wonder if we forget those few but vital words. We visualize the bush burning we think of Moses taking off his sandals as God reminded him he stood on holy ground. We may even remember reading of God's concern for the Israelites and the task to which he put Moses. But do we equally remember those five words, I will be with you? In a way, they're almost tagged on, yet their significance is incalculable. What God asked of Moses was huge, for the journey to the land of milk and honey would prove to be long, arduous, peppered with difficulties, highs and lows. In other words, it would be anything but an easy journey. And indeed, despite his determined leadership, on the cusp of its conclusion, it was one which Moses would hand over to Joshua to complete. In his letter to the community of believers in Rome and at chapter 12, we heard Paul's exhortations. Let love be sincere, detest what is evil, but embrace what is good. Be glad in hope and bear suffering with fortitude. Feed those who are hungry, even those who are enemies. And if they thirst, give them something to drink. Do not be haughty, associate with the lowly, and so on and so on. 
shades perhaps of the trials and tribulations which Moses was to endure among his own people on their journey out of captivity. You know, it's not always easy to be a practicing Christian. God makes demands of us. We may have to take his gospel into difficult situations. Now and again we may find ourselves derided for our efforts. We may be asked to come alongside people we find it difficult to like, let alone love. We may have to comfort those who are struggling to cope with life or who look to see reflected in us the loving care of God as they enter their final chapter. As American author Sheldon Van Auken, a convert to Christianity who subsequently suffered tragedy in his family life, puts it in his autobiography entitled A Severe Mercy, it is not possible to be an incidental Christian. But we have our faith in God to sustain us. And by the same token, he has faith in us. Faith that we will do good work in his name and for his sake. Just like Moses, we may find and feel we are not up to the job. But God does not expect us to do everything by ourselves. His great commission that we go out into all the world and bring all nations and peoples into the faith has this encouragement, this promise for us. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. God gave strength to Moses for the work he entrusted to him. God gives us strength for the work he has entrusted to people just like you and like me. With that strength comes his love, which surrounds us in whatever we do and wherever we go. It is a very personal love. In the words of St. Augustine, God loves each of us as if there were only one of us. As the burning bush was never consumed, so will God's mission, the work begun in his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, continue and continue in us. Glory be to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Our prayers of intercession, let us pray. Living God, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing, ever-present in our world, help us to capture something of your greatness, to see that our small horizon are not the last word. Teach us to see with your eyes. Show us that where we see no future, your promise continues. Where we see only obstacles, you have planned the way through. Where we see only our limitations, you see opportunities. Where we see despair, you see hope. Where we see division, you work towards reconciliation. And where we see sorrow, you are longing to bring joy. Teach us to see with your eyes. Help us to see that you are there to guide us and show us the way, no matter how we are feeling how inadequate we think we are. Help us to know and feel that you are there to support us. Help us to see the things from your perspective with all its opportunities, potential, goodness and beauty. Give us faith to see life in a new light, in a different way and from a wider perspective. And give us the determination not just to dream, but to work towards the fulfilment of our vision working for your kingdom here on earth. 
Living God, help us, help those who have lost their way to know that you are there to help and show them the way. God, you love all that you have made, the world and its creatures. Your love gathers and enfolds us. Your heart breaks when any part of your creation suffers. So God, as our awareness grows of your presence all around, may we be so attuned that we weep when you weep and our hearts break when yours is broken. God in love, you won't do as we ask, but you will kneel beside us and patiently show us how to make things better. You will unearth the wisdom that you created in us for the healing of the world. You will affirm us and give us each a unique part in playing a changing in the world, in ushering in your justice and your peace. So, God, prepare us to roll up our sleeves and work alongside you. We pray for our world leaders that they, do may, uh, that they too may be filled with your wisdom and love and your healing power. We pray that their eyes and our eyes may be open to the needs of, to find the new ways forward and the possibilities and bound for honouring all creation and for building nations where all are valued, where all matter, where all the economy is modelled on your divine economy. We pray for all those who live in fear today and for those whose fears have been realised, those who mourn loved ones, those who see no light of dawn after darkness. We pray too for those who give, have given up hoping for different or better. May we hold out hope and faith enough for the world and may we live in love. God awakens us to your truth and your light to all the opportunities we have of emerging from darkness, fueled by new energy to make our world, our church, our neighbourhood, beacons of hope that is realised in our serving and by serving one another. Gracious God, we pray for those who feel they have no need of you, those who feel inadequate, those who feel the burden is too much. Teach us to pray with love and understanding, to try to enter the real needs that are around us, to believe that there, through you, our prayers you heal and bless, that you will give them strength and support their need. As we remember those of before you the needs of others in silence. Bless them all and make sure that they feel encouraged and strengthened by you. And with these words we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We listen to Margaret play Courage Brother, Do Not Stumble, and you can find that in at number 513.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.